because I grew up with bugs and I cannot imagine why we have a fear for organisms that have more legs than us. That is the only difference apart from size. So we would like to reimagine our point of view in terms of how we look at bugs. And I hope at the end of my talk, you get to change your perspective about bugs. It's not that we have feared it in the first place. We could have just forgotten our relationships with bugs. So we look at the perspective of cultural entomology. As mentioned earlier, when we talk about bugs, the very thing that we first imagine would be our encounters of flies, cockroaches, spiders, and moths, those that we have high aversion of. But if you look at the perspective of cultural entomology, we look at bugs in terms of how we relate to them in terms of language, literature, music and arts, folklore and religion, and even recreation. So in terms of literature and language, the Filipino language is very diverse. As diverse as our islands, we have a wide array of languages. We do not call them dialects, rather they are languages. And the proof of the diversity of languages that we have in our country is exemplified or is shown by the number of common names that we have for bugs or for insects. For instance, let's look at the Cebuano language. The bed bug in Tagalog, we call it surot. In Sabuano, we call it dugo. While in Hiligaynon, we call it kamsa. So three different names for one particular insect. Again, let's move on. What about cicadas? You hear this every summer. In Tagalog, we call this kuliglig. In Cebuano, this is gangis. In Bantuanon, this is common in Roblon, this is agangangit. What about fireflies? Fireflies, we call this alitaptap in Tagalog. In Sabuano, aninipot. Again, in Bantuanon, it's also called aninipot. And fireflies aren't really flies. They are beetles. And they glow in the dark in order to communicate with fellows of the same species. It's like someone texting you. The way by which these particular insects communicate with each other is not through text messages, but rather through light communication. Gamu Gamo, which is very much familiar with in our uh, works of Rizal. Remember that the mother of Rizal was talking to Rizal when he was young while teaching him Spanish. He, she talked of a story dealing with an insect, which is a moth. Although the term Gamu Gamo, we also use that for termites. Truthfully speaking, in Tagalog, we use gamo-gamo to refer to moths. In Cebuano, we call this a daba-daba. In Ilocano, this is called the kulibangbang. So in terms of music and art, we have to be able to appreciate that Filipinos already have a good relationship with insects. And it's not just with flies. It's not just with cockroaches. We have a different perspective here in terms of music and art. I hope you can sing with me, even just mentally. You're familiar with this song? Sit, 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 ali, bang, bang, sa laginto, sa lagu, bang, ang babae, sa lansangan, kung gumiri, parang tandang. And this particular music is reflective of our good ties with insect. Sit, sit, sit refers to, guess what? The cicada. Alibangbang is another term for butterfly. Salaginto is a jewel beetle. While Salagubang is the June beetle we are most familiar with, especially in our endeavors in natural history. We used to tie strings on June beetles and observe them flying around. That is our first exposure to natural history, right? Again, in art, our Tivoli uh, brass casters, they use butterflies as inspirations. So we have perspectives of change. The metamorphosis of butterflies is exemplified as a means of inspiring hope, renewal, and courage to embrace change. So if that doesn't change your perspective, I'll give you another example. In Abra, members of the Tingian culture 
sea spiders, for instance, called the lawa-lawa, as associated not just with the culture of weaving, but also with the culture of creativity, taking note of the natural-born capacity of the spiders to weave. So we take our inspiration of weaving there. We observe nature. We observe arthropods. We do not get necessarily bugged by bugs. In Pafi Laguna, there's this craft that shaves a wooden stick with a knife. We call it the kayas. And one of the common mod models for the kayas that we use would be butterflies. And we often associate butterflies as things for beauty. And what about folklore? This time, we're dealing with traditional beliefs and customs that are associated with bugs. Uh, for this time, I would like you to raise up four fingers, and I'll ask you to put a finger down if you're familiar with that particular folklore or belief. So for instance, you know this. If you kill this insect in front of the mirror, they say it will become plentiful. So put a finger down if you're familiar with this one. It relates to us the importance of good hygiene. That we know that when this particular insect is present in our system, there is a hygiene problem. Again, put a finger down if you're familiar with this. Folklore. If a very big butterfly hangs around in broad daylight, and follows every member of the family in your household. It's a sign that a close relative will die. We associate dark colored insects or bugs for death. It tells us that our culture values a lot in terms of family members, marriage, and even health and a good harvest, the Philippines being an agricultural country. Again, put the finger down. If you know that people believe that when a cicada sings, you expect a long drought. So we know that cicadas occur in summer times. And that we associate the presence of cicadas with drought. We also associate particular insects in terms of their value in agroecosystems how they control insect pests. And this time, Filipinos have often observed that if you hurt the taga-taga or the praying mantis, that means your harvest is threatened. So our culture has been very much tied with our relationships with arthropods way before we know it. It's just that our fears get ahead of us. We forget that we have a good relationship with bugs. Another folklore if a big spider falls in front of a girl and goes back up the ceiling, a man will come and ask for her hand in marriage. So we use spiders as symbols for good luck in terms of relationships. But there's a catch here. If the, fighter, if the spider falls down to the floor, that is an indication of death. If the spider goes up, that is an indication of a proposal. So you have to be observant on this. Recreation, we get non-material benefits from a lot of bugs. Either we play with them, we use them as pets, we derive pleasure from playing with spiders like tarantulas, although many of you have fear of tarantulas. But I think at least one, of two of you, one or two of you have the experience or have had the experience of playing with spiders. That is your first exposure to biology in terms of how they compete with one another. I'm not sure if you were able to do this when you were young, but June beetles were often clipped on their wings and used to wrestle with one another. If you haven't had that during your childhood, maybe you have missed something. Provisioning. The bugs that bug us actually are a good source of protein. For instance, we have root grubs of the salagubang or the June beetle, which we find as exotic, but they are good appetizers and good sources of protein, even better than our standard chicken leg. And it's also the same for the camaro. 
We collect camaro before planting rice. And when that happens, we collect the camaro and cook it adobo style. And that is also a good source of protein. Many other of our Asian, mem uh, Asian relatives are already tapping on insects as another source of food. But Filipinos, not yet. Traditionally, if you look at also our history books, our pinuti blades are tipped with either snake, spider, or scorpion venom. And this was previously used for self-defense. So it's not just that we fear bugs. We may have forgotten our relationships with bugs. And how do we go back to it? So I'm closing my talk, putting you this idea that it's definitely obvious that we Filipinos perceive insects in many dimensions, often covered by our fear. But a lot of what we know now about bugs is that they play a lot of um, significant effect in terms of our cultural artifacts. So we use them as food, we use them for play, and generally we call these ties, not fear, we call this ecosystem services. And having said that, I hope this dispels any fear of what bugs us about bugs. Maraming salamat po.